Hey, shalom, brothers and sisters. Thank you for coming back. I welcome you. Uh, today, I want to talk about a, an old archaeology find. Uh, it was, called, it was uh, the, uh, the, Ta the Talmuz effigy. It was uh, a stone carving. It was found decades ago. Um, I'm going to read the article to you because I just find this fascinating. I think you will too, but I'm, I'm not honoring this false god or whatever you want to call it, you know, that, uh, you know, Middle East back in the day, they used to worship and including the tribes of Israel. You know, they went, they went up, did apostasy and went ahead and started worshiping other types of, well, false, false idols and gods or whatever. But I'll read this to you. Found in a palace of Tel, Tel Arad, Israel, dating from 3000 to 2650 BCE. That's, that's pretty old. That tells you how far back this this idea came this stone depicts two similar images of a man with a branch or grain sheaf shaped head one lying down and the other standing the image is believed to represent the fertility god Tammuz which was the reincarnation uh, suppose the reincarnation of Nimrod who died in the early summer and was resurrected in the winter to the ancient pagans, this represented the cycle of summer, agriculture, death, and winter was rebirth. The pagan worship of Tammuz included women ritually laminating and weeping over the death of Tammuz. Over time, the Israelis adopted this pagan worship as the prophet Ezekiel tests. And I'll quote, Then he brought me to the door of the gate of Yahweh, at Yahweh's house, which was toward the north, and behold, there sat women weeping for Tammuz. Now you can find that in Ezekiel uh, chapter 8, verse 14. Now, modern Jews refer to the fourth Hebrew month as Tammuz, coincidentally. This slain king deity reborn at the winter solstice has been passed down through the centuries and has even been absorbed into Christianity through the holiday of Christmas and the birth of our Messiah. So, tells you, and that ain't the only, that ain't, that ain't the only, suppose of idol, false god that's been absorbed into Christianity. There's been, a, there's been others too, like, you know, a star of, uh, for Easter and so forth, you know. Um, and it just gives you, a little, it gives you a little bit of a history and a background of, you know, where all these beliefs came in, the, the blending, the, was it the synchronization? Synchronism of uh, false religions until the into the one true religion, and um, you know we just it's it's good that we you know study scriptures and we weed out you know separate the wheat from the tares and uh, and burn the burn the get rid and burn the the waste the stuff the nonsense stuff you know, but um, I just figured that would be a little of interest to you. And um, just, you know, even you can look up in the Cyclopedia Britannica or whatever, you can look up Tammuz and others and see what they have to say. And they usually, you know, them say, the uh, encyclopedias, at least they're like sort of brutally honest. You know, they flat, they flat out tell you the origins and, you know, they blend it into, uh, you know, what you'd call it Christianity, the, the way, the movement, you know. And uh, that was, you know, the apostles, they tried to keep us clear and keep us on the right path. But after a while, you know, of course they passed away and the ravenous wolves started coming in, devouring the, the whole flock. But that's all I really wanted to say. I don't bring that up to, you know, bring that to your attention. And, um, Hey, that's all I want to say. And I thank you again for joining me and, you know, please subscribe and, uh, hit the notification bell. Give me a big like and comment below. And that's all I really have to say right now but i'll be back for another show and please watch my other videos i invite you to watch my other videos and i thank you again peace out and shalom till we meet again